Welcome to the Alliance series of webinars. Today we'll talk about the voluntary targets for road safety and victim support that the UN recently approved. In November 2017, United Nations member states reached consensus on 12 performance targets that all together work towards reducing road deaths and aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals 3.6 and 11.2. It is the member states' responsibility to meet these targets, but Alliance members NGOs have at country level a very important role to play in supporting delivery, monitoring progress and holding their governments to account. But what are these targets and what do they mean? Why are they important and how can you work with them as an NGO? We have created a webinar series to try to address these questions and aim to show simple activities that can support delivery, monitor progress and overall contribute meaningfully to the sustainable development goals. In this webinar, we'll give you an example from the real world, from Azerbaijan, where our member A. Mac and Vusal Rajabli has been involved in creating a national action plan for, his, for their country. Vusal will talk about how he got involved and overall what NGOs can do in pushing the plans forward and thereby contribute to meeting the voluntary targets that all countries should have, have an action plan in place by 2020. Should you wish to learn more, we have collected a number of resources for you to explore further. You can find them on our website, which is shown here. You can also, this is also where you put your questions or evaluate the webinars. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Vusal. Vusal, welcome to you. Thank you, Lotte. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, yes, my name is Vusal Rajabli. I'm the president of National Automobile Club of Azerbaijan. Uh, our club is a member of FIA and we are uh, very active in road safety in Azerbaijan um, uh, since 2011. Uh, well, in this presentation, I would like to uh, tell uh, everyone about current road safety challenges in my country, in Azerbaijan. Um, I will talk um, uh, in details about uh, National Road Safety Action Plan efforts. Um, we are about to start National Road Safety Action Plan this year, quite soon. Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, and what it took us to get here, which is, you know, uh, you know, proactive uh, in initiatives of NGOs, such as two NGOs that I used to, well, Hayat, I used to be a president of, and uh, now I'm a president of AMAC uh, on road safety now. Um, also, I would make some uh, recommendations to my NGO colleagues and fellows, uh, what it takes to get where we got. Uh, this is uh, the, the outline of my presentation. Now, I'll start with current challenges uh, on road safety in my country. Um, uh, obviously, uh, one of the biggest challenges is lack of needed uh, coordination, coordination between not just NGOs, but um, uh, every player in, in, in the country. The, the biggest uh, constraint, difficulty, is that government agencies are not cooperating in this area. Uh, as I said, our national strategies is about to come uh, to life very soon, so it was missing for many years. Uh, there are gaps in uh, relevant legislation, which makes our life really tough. Um, enforcement is there, but there are problems, uh, and um, uh, I wouldn't go into details, but uh, I just want to say that um, sometimes enforcement, uh, if, if, if police personnel is not well aware of road safety issues and, 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 and their role in, in all that, it, it could be really negative, but uh, I'll, I'll touch that later. Um, obviously, uh, continuous funding is an issue. <coughs> Uh, something that I find very important, which is uh, data and research, uh, we have lack of that. Uh, data does not get properly updated. Uh, we don't have uh, research for analytical purposes, um, uh, for, for public, for policy making and for decision making processes. Um, uh, there's always a need for innovative approaches to road safety. Um, and it's not just infrastructure, it is also uh, uh, some some logical uh, solutions, some some uh, um, you know uh, basic solutions such, such as uh, uh, awareness and education. Those are the things that are missing. Uh, 
the existing driver education program um, is outdated in terms of um, uh, it is not being modernized for many years. It is something that was left over from Soviet uh, era. And uh, that leads to, uh, to an issue that has to do with behavior. Uh, so we have a poor driver and pedestrian culture, uh, and that comes uh, due to lack of education and awareness as well. Um, well, what took us to uh, uh, push uh, National Road Safety Action Plan? Um, we, uh, it, there were numerous attempts. Uh, you know, when, when I became president of AMAC back in 2011, uh, we were the first ones to start talking about road safety and uh, we made some uh, uh, good uh, uh, communication campaigns which I will talk later about. But uh, in 2015 we managed to attract World Bank and EBRD and Asian Development Bank to kind of uh, help on my government to draft the National Road Safety uh, Action Plan. Uh, but it, stayed uh, at, at that level, it never moved ahead. And we did not have a political decision, so to say. It wasn't uh, brought up to the attention of the top leadership of the country. And uh, you know, uh, and in, in some countries, and, and mine being one of it, um, it, it, it really helps when uh, prime minister or president is aware of it and he or, or she you know, uh, endorses and supports it. And, um, uh, when in 2016 uh, Azerbaijan hosted uh, first in the history of Azerbaijan uh, Formula One event, we had the uh, FIA president John Todd visiting Azerbaijan, and I, being the president of uh, an automobile club member of FIA, I had a chance to meet him uh, and greet him in my hometown. And uh, when I was asked, uh, uh, you know, what would would you say to your president if you had this chance? And I said, there's only one thing I want my president to actually pay uh, uh, you know good attention and that is uh, road safety campaigning road safety um, issues because it's number one killer of young people in the country uh, so we need to stop the war uh, the invisible war on roads and uh, that message has passed has been passed to my president and uh, you know uh, I was uh, so happy to hear my president speaking next day on TV about these issues and uh, uh, and he initiated uh, a beginning of um, this National Road Safety Action Plan draft. Uh, you know, by, we, he, he, he um, initiated an establishment of a working group of relevant government uh, organizations, CSO members, independent experts, opinion leaders, lawyers, and obviously our club, um, my organization, was a member of that uh, working group, uh, which was... Um, uh, within the ministry, the cabinet of ministers. So it was a very high level working group. The, we were only two NGOs, which is AMAK, the National Automobile Club of Azerbaijan, and AEF, Azerbaijan Automobile Federation. Both of our clubs are member of FIA, and uh, Azerbaijan Automobile Federation is doing a lot in the field of sport and road safety in Azerbaijan. And um, being quite an influential organization as well, uh, they have been authorized to chair this working group at the Cabinet of Ministers and we being uh, very close partners with, with them, uh, you know, it makes uh, our life easier, uh, our, our voices are, are heard, uh, uh, you know, uh, if we speak together about the same issue, it makes it uh, a, a much better. AMAC uh, chairs uh, a consortium of NGOs on, in road safety, so we, uh, we were voicing um, uh, the position of uh, uh, about 10 NGOs, uh, and, if, uh, and not just NGOs, but also some uh, people that are experts, that are, uh, you know, activists, uh, promoters, uh, etc. Uh, and, and obviously, when you speak out on behalf of uh, uh, a third sector, you know, a, a group of NGOs, it makes your point stronger, and uh, you know, um, uh, you obviously cover uh, many areas, not just one that you're good at, but but many. Uh, and that was the strength of AMAC in the working group. It's better to have one strong NGO uh, expressing opinion of of dozen NGOs than having dozen NGOs speaking out uh, you know in a distorted way you know each asking for one and and not not 
um, you know, not having a united kind of uh, uh, position. I think what we managed to to bring to that um, national action plan is is a political will, because we made it um, clear that uh, as long as there's political will, money and the rest can be managed. We can find money, we can uh, involve uh, sponsors, we can uh, uh, attract funding, sponsors, etc. But as long as there's a political will. So the, the draft was prepared. Uh, it's been reviewed by every relevant ministry and organization and uh, player. Uh, and at the current status, uh, it is a final version. It has been approved at every level. Uh, now, um, I, I want to describe a bit what is within that action plan. It is. Um, multi-spectral and designed to be implemented on national, regional and global levels in general, the action plan, uh, with the primary focus on national and local level actions. The implementation of activities are designed according to five pillars of the decade of action for road safety. And for those who don't know about those pillars, um, it is road safety management, safe road, roads and mobility, safer vehicles, safer road users, post-crash response. Uh, we, are, we have also managed to sneak in uh, some environmental issues because, as we all know, cars are uh, affecting environment pretty much, uh, uh, you know, uh, heavily. Uh, but uh, that is not within road safety. I'm just saying we, we use our opportunity to make that action plan very, very uh, uh, useful, so to say. So. so um, um, each activity has its own uh, bound targets and uh, assigned uh, executive bodies, like Ministry of Education is in charge of their piece, Ministry of Healthcare is, is, is in charge of their part, uh, and uh, we as NGOs are um, an active uh, implementers and uh, those who monitor uh, how our government institutions are going to do their, their parts. Um, uh, Nothing uh, as an achievement has yet been um, approved, but uh, as I said, once it's signed by the president, it will become, uh, uh, you know, a part of a ministerial portfolio, uh, and 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 it will be budget allocated and and, and uh, timeline action uh, will will be designed. Um, action plan is not being published yet. Um, and, and, and um, only the world agency has, has access to it, but nevertheless, it is quite um, ready. Um, now, let me talk to you about um, how to get involved, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, how we plan to get involved and in general how NGOs can get involved in, in this kind of, uh, um, you know, action plans. Uh, definitely, it is true in, my, in the in case of Azerbaijan, my government does a lot of stuff. Uh, but uh, there's always a gap, which for, for non numerous reasons, I mean, reasons could be unimaginable, but it could be financial constraints, it could be uh, political constraints, it could be elections coming up, it could be, you know, some other uh, uh, economic crisis reasons. So by blaming government and by saying, oh, they don't do this, they don't do that, we don't really get anywhere. So my recommendation to my NGO fellows would be, to try to team up, to show to the government that you're there to help them, not to oppose to them, not to uh, show them what they do wrong, but actually to come and say, hey, there's this gap, I realize there's so much you do and you can't just handle this or you can't cover this or this, this is not within your priorities. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to help you out. Uh, and I know it would benefit you, the people of the country and uh, you know generations to come. Now. Let me talk to you about um, how to get involved, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, how we plan to get involved and in general how NGOs can get involved in, in this kind of, uh, uh, you know, action plans. Um, well, we, we plan to uh, practically implement uh, road safety initiatives uh, through projects, campaigns and petitions. Uh, and uh, we advise to do the same. I mean, you never stop. You, you continuously do campaigning. You engage your, 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 your people. Uh, and, and, and get some petitions signed and uh, engage all possible parties, private NGOs, government or media. And media would be really powerful. Uh, we had actually a, a campaign back in the days where we trained journalists to 
when they highlight uh, cash on the road, how they should message uh, this. So you need to educate your media to be able to uh, deliver those messages. Uh, very important to have an evidence-based approach through research on different road safety issues. Sometimes we didn't have any funding, so we gathered volunteers from different universities and we did some researches. We, we used existing data, we did some additional surveys on the streets, so um, uh, we always relied on, on, on data that was evidence-based. This is very important. Um, creating a network platform for all the sectors to get together and work under one umbrella is, is very important. You, you could find some uh, strong organization uh, to take a lead uh, or a person, uh, politician, uh, celebrity, uh, whatever works in your country, and build a network around that leader and, 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 uh, uh, and, and be under one umbrella. Uh, you need to have constant meetings, roundtable discussions, individual meetings, press conferences, uh, uh, with participation of relevant stakeholders to constantly raise awareness on the importance of this issue and to bring it to their agenda because uh, especially politicians, they are always busy and, and many people are trying to sneak new things into their agenda. So we NGOs, we activists, road safety advocates should always um, remember to bring it to the agenda of uh, important people to, to always discuss it. Um, partner with municipalities. Uh, you know, if, if you have association of municipalities, that would be fantastic, but otherwise, um, you know, to engage general public through community meetings, uh, municipalities could be really, really helpful. Um, regulated invest investigations on the existing relevant agencies, legislations and programs on road safety. This is important because you may end up seeing um, some organizations authorized, uh, you know, within the government to deal with it, but they do nothing about it. So you, you find out about those agencies, you find out about their um, scopes, you go and meet them and talk to them and, and, and promote them to, to, to do um, road safety projects, activities. Um, what we did, we created a working group consisting of relevant uh, government uh, bodies, NGOs and private sector uh, back in the days. We also invited independent experts, some uh, opinion leaders, even lawyers. Uh, and it was very helpful because um, uh, we could have a platform where uh, we could um, talk about it, uh, uh, we, we all share the same idea, which is to save people's lives. And uh, this way or another, everyone gets affected by, by problems on the road. Uh, so all those um, uh, deep knowledge, so to say, of, of, of people of this country, of their behavior, uh, matching with some transport and mobility expertise, helps us to uh, understand the gaps, see the gaps, and then to contribute with solutions and with uh, uh, with ways of of how it can be sorted uh, with minimal resources and uh, find those people, put them together in a working group, gather once a month, and it would definitely give an effect. Uh, if you can, partner with leading media agencies to raise awareness and improve their capacity. As I said, we did. Uh, uh, training for journalists, and it, and it worked really well. I mean, you could see a huge difference between the article they wrote a month ago that there was a crash, this many people died, full stop. And then uh, uh, next month, you see an article where they say this is a big issue, many people die on the roads, they bring some statistics, and then they say if those passengers would have used sit belt, uh, this could have been, uh, you know. Uh, lives could have been saved. So these kind of messages, if, if they start with, with some statistics and end with some strong messages, it makes huge change than just giving a message that crash happened, people died, that's it. Um, and, um, you know, key messages on road safety is very important. Uh, you may be the ones designing those key messages, but you need to have um, um, your, your channels, your, your, your resources through media agencies, uh, whether it's traditional or social media, it doesn't matter. Uh, push those messages through, and that's very important as well. Um, okay. Let me tell you now about what I, uh, with my organizations, uh, have done uh, to promote road safety in my country.
We, um, we brought up this issue of road safety. Nobody actually heard of that before. They all knew, that, you know, crashes are happening. They all knew people are dying, but never, you know, people never paid attention to this matter. So uh, since 2009, we started uh, communicating this issue to the public. And we did some successful projects with Hayat, which is we did safe villages sponsored by EBRD. We had uh, a, a big highway being constructed with EBRD money, and uh, we we um, got the permission and we worked with 20 villages. And we did a, a video with um, uh, a Eurovision Song Contents uh, winner uh, from Azerbaijan, Nigar Jamal. She's a very good friend of our. Uh, team and uh, we, we named her uh, our road safety ambassador. So we made a very popular video with her participation, which was very popular among young people in my country. Together with IST, we did a research project among pedestrians aimed at finding uh, out their existing knowledge, perception, attitude and behavior in terms of road safety in Baku, because some people don't even think about it. You know? And um, my, my last uh, thing with, within Hayat was promoting uh, the use of child car seat. And uh, I focused on road safety within Amak. We did uh, road safety education sessions uh, and activities at schools and kindergartens and among children, teachers and parents, piloting East Road Safety Education Pack in Russian and Azerbaijani. We did training on defensive driving and first aid for taxi drivers and their management in cooperation with relevant government agencies to improve road safety. We did research on um, accessibility challenges for people with uh, disabilities. We did data collection, development of recommendations, worked with different government agencies. So we managed to um, a, a citywide campaign, a big campaign, for six months. Uh, we called it cautious driver, uh, conscious driver, conscious pedestrian. It was about um, uh, road safety awareness campaigning. It was full of video clips, posters, TV video messages, interviews with authorities like road police, etc. We uh, work right now, uh, by the way, thanks to uh, a seed grant from uh, Alliance of NGOs on road safety to advocate uh, for increased use of child restraint in cars and adoption of policy incorporating use of child restraint system in Back seat by 2011, uh, sorry, 19. We do have a legislation on, on child seat, but it is wrong. Uh, and that's when uh, I was talking about enforcement. It can be wrong, and that's uh, going to be adopted by 2019. And we're going to start next year a big enforcement on that. And, uh, you know, out of that many projects, uh, you know, this would be the last to mention, we, we are developing and implementing an, an effective advocacy campaign on road safety education to achieve road safety education policy change in Azerbaijan. But I think uh, this is just to highlight uh, what you can do and, and how, how, how things evolve. Uh, to summarize, uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure same as you have challenges in this field. Um, we, you know, I'm proud to be part of this historic moment in my country where, uh, you know, with my, uh, organizations and my team's uh, you know hard work we we got uh, this decree to the desk of the president and uh, he's about to sign national road safety action plan uh, you need to remember that the, of importance of NGOs uh, proactive in, engagement in this field um, you know they need to bridge uh, the role of uh, in gathering all the agencies under one umbrella because we are the ones who can do it and should do it I should say uh, and, and uh, these are the key messages and if you can keep doing what you're doing it, it, you will get where you want to get uh, thank you for your attention I'm pretty sure you all do a great job and I'm looking forward to meeting you in April next year in uh, Crete thank you, thank you. Exactly, Usal. That's a that's a good ending. Now um, everyone can ask uh, questions. They can. Uh, we have a form that uh, is on our website where they can ask you questions. And uh, if they have any anything specific that would like to um, to learn from you, so thank you for offering that as well, Usal. And thank you for your time. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Usal, for a very interesting presentation. This webinar is available online and you can go back and listen to it as many times as you like. Should you wish to learn more, we have collected a number of resources which can be found on our website. Thank you for listening and have a safe day.